Hi, today we are going to explore the history of Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence, don't forget to subscribe and put likes, enjoy listening. The Declaration of Independence, one of the most iconic and enduring documents in American history, stands as a testament to the ideals upon which the United States was founded. At the heart of this historic document is Thomas Jefferson, a polymath and visionary statesman who meticulously crafted the Declaration's prose and laid the philosophical foundation for American independence. This comprehensive account delves into the life of Thomas Jefferson, the circumstances that led to the drafting of the Declaration of Independence, and the enduring legacy of this pivotal moment in American history. The Early Life of Thomas Jefferson Thomas Jefferson, the principal author of the Declaration of Independence and one of the most influential figures in American history, was born into a world very different from the one he would later help shape. Born on April 13, 1743, in Shadwell, Virginia, Jefferson came into the world at a time when the American colonies were still firmly under British rule. Yet even in his earliest years, there were signs of the qualities and ideas that would make him a central figure in the American Revolution and the founding of the United States. Jefferson's family background played a significant role in shaping his character and outlook on life. His father, Peter Jefferson, was a successful planter and surveyor. Peter's success in these fields allowed him to amass a substantial estate and afforded his son, Thomas, opportunities for education and advancement that many of his contemporaries did not have. Jane Randolph Jefferson, his mother, came from one of Virginia's most prominent families, the Randolphs. Thus, from both sides of his family, Thomas Jefferson inherited not only privilege, but also a sense of duty and a connection to Virginia's elite. The early years of Thomas Jefferson's life were spent in the rural splendor of Shadwell, where he enjoyed the benefits of his family's relative prosperity. This idyllic landscape with its rolling hills and verdant forests would leave an indelible mark on him. The natural beauty of Virginia's countryside and its vast tracts of land would later become central to his vision of an agrarian republic, a vision that would shape his political and philosophical beliefs. Jefferson's early education was a testament to the aspirations of his parents and the intellectual climate of the time. His father, recognizing the importance of education, hired private tutors to provide young Thomas with a classical education. Under their guidance, he studied Latin, Greek, and classical literature. These subjects not only expanded his intellectual horizons, but also instilled in him a love for the ideas of antiquity. The works of philosophers like Cicero and Seneca, as well as the histories of Herodotus and Thucydides, became touchstones for his own thinking. In 1757, at the age of 14, Jefferson's education took a significant step forward when he began attending the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. At this institution, he continued his study of the classics and was exposed to the works of Enlightenment thinkers such as John Locke and Francis Bacon. These thinkers would profoundly influence his later political thought, particularly his views on liberty, natural rights, and the role of government. While at William and Mary, Jefferson's intellectual curiosity continued to grow, and he displayed a voracious appetite for learning. He was particularly interested in the natural sciences and developed a keen interest in botany, a passion that would stay with him throughout his life. His scientific pursuits, along with his study of law, broadened his knowledge and enriched his understanding of the world. The death of his father in 1757, when Thomas was just 14 years old, brought added responsibilities and a significant inheritance. Thomas inherited not only land but also a sense of duty to manage his family's affairs. This early experience with estate management would later serve him well as a planter and landowner. Early Political Career The year 1769 marked a significant turning point in the life of Thomas Jefferson, as it was the moment when he embarked on his journey into the realm of colonial politics. Elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses, the legislative body of the Virginia colony, 
Jefferson took his first steps toward becoming a prominent figure in the tumultuous events that would ultimately lead to the American Revolution. Jefferson's election to the House of Burgesses was not merely a stroke of luck, but rather a testament to his growing reputation as a man of intellect and principle within his community. Despite being a relatively young man at the time, his education and upbringing had equipped him with the tools necessary to engage in the political debates of the day. His classical education, particularly his study of Greek and Roman history and philosophy, provided him with a deep appreciation for the principles of democracy, individual rights, and civic duty. However, the political climate of the late 1760s was far from tranquil. The relationship between the American colonies and Great Britain had grown increasingly strained, primarily due to a series of controversial policies imposed by the British government. One of the most contentious issues was taxation without representation, as exemplified by the Stamp Act of 1765 and the Townshend Acts of 1767, which imposed taxes on a variety of goods imported into the American colonies. It was in this charged atmosphere that Thomas Jefferson emerged as a vocal advocate for colonial rights. His commitment to the principles of self-government and opposition to British tyranny quickly became apparent. One of his earliest contributions to the cause of colonial resistance was his influential pamphlet, A Summary View of the Rights of British America, published in 1774. In this document, he eloquently argued that Virginians and all colonists possessed the same rights as their English counterparts and should not be subjected to arbitrary British rule. The pivotal moment in Jefferson's early political career, however, came with his involvement in the passage of the Virginia Resolves in 1765. These resolutions were a response to the Stamp Act, which imposed a tax on various printed materials, including legal documents and newspapers, in the American colonies. The Virginia Resolves, drafted by George Johnston, but with significant input from Jefferson and others, declared that Virginians had the exclusive right to tax themselves and that any attempt by an external authority, such as the British Parliament, to tax the colony was a violation of their rights and privileges. The passage of the Virginia Resolves marked a bold and defiant stance against British taxation policies. It sent a clear message that the people of Virginia were not willing to accept taxation without representation, a principle that would later become a rallying cry for the American Revolution. The resolves also highlighted Jefferson's emerging role as a political leader and thinker who could effectively articulate the grievances and aspirations of the colonists. The Road to Revolution The outbreak of the American Revolutionary War in 1775 marked a critical juncture in the life of Thomas Jefferson and in the trajectory of American history. With the sound of musket fire echoing through the colonies, Jefferson's involvement in the revolutionary movement gained momentum, solidifying his position as a leading advocate for colonial independence and self-determination. By 1775, the tensions between the American colonies and Great Britain had reached a boiling point. The British government's attempts to assert greater control over the colonies, coupled with punitive measures such as the Intolerable Acts, had pushed many colonists towards a more radical stance. Jefferson, who had already demonstrated his commitment to colonial rights and opposition to British tyranny, found himself increasingly drawn into the unfolding drama of revolution. One of the key moments in Jefferson's early revolutionary activities was his election as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress in 1775. Representing Virginia, Jefferson joined the ranks of other notable patriots, including John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and John Hancock. This assembly, convened in Philadelphia, was tasked with coordinating the colony's response to the mounting crisis with Great Britain. Jefferson's presence in the Second Continental Congress was not merely symbolic. It was a testament to his growing reputation as a thoughtful and articulate advocate for colonial rights. His eloquence, both in writing and speaking, set him apart as a voice of reason and principle. It was during this time that he delivered a speech that would foreshadow his future contributions to the cause of independence. His words resonated with the urgency of the moment. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. 
Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. However, it was not just Jefferson's oratory skills that garnered attention, it was also his prolific and persuasive writings. Among the most significant of these was his pamphlet titled, A Summary View of the Rights of British America, published in 1774. In this influential document, Jefferson eloquently articulated the colonists' grievances and their demand for greater autonomy. He argued that the American colonies possessed the same natural rights as any other people and that the British government had violated these rights through unjust taxation and legislation. Jefferson's summary view was not merely a declaration of grievances, but a powerful call to action. He laid out the case for American independence in clear and compelling terms. The document resonated with many colonists who were growing disillusioned with British rule. Jefferson's words captured the spirit of the times and helped to crystallize the sentiments of those who believed that the only path forward was to break free from British dominion. As the American Revolutionary War unfolded, Thomas Jefferson's commitment to the cause deepened. While he did not serve in the Continental Army like some of his contemporaries, his contributions as a thinker and writer were invaluable. He was appointed to various committees and played a key role in drafting important documents, including the Virginia Constitution and the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, both of which would have a lasting impact on American governance and civil liberties. The Committee of Five In June 1776, as the American colonies teetered on the precipice of declaring independence from British rule, the Continental Congress took a momentous step by forming a committee charged with the formidable task of drafting a formal Declaration of Independence. This committee, known as the Committee of Five, consisted of five eminent figures of the American Revolutionary Era, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston, and most notably, Thomas Jefferson. The establishment of this committee and the subsequent crafting of the Declaration of Independence would prove to be a pivotal moment not only in the course of the American Revolution, but also in the annals of political and philosophical history. Each member of the Committee of Five brought unique skills and qualities to the table, making them a formidable team. John Adams, a fiery advocate for independence, was a seasoned politician and diplomat who had already played a vital role in the events leading up to the American Revolution. Benjamin Franklin, the elder statesman of the group, was renowned not only for his scientific accomplishments, but also for his diplomatic acumen, having served as an ambassador to France. Roger Sherman, a practical and skilled legislator, had extensive experience in the art of compromise and consensus building. Robert Livingston, a prominent New York delegate, added geographic diversity to the committee and brought with him a wealth of legal knowledge. However, it was Thomas Jefferson who emerged as the central figure of the Committee of Five, despite being the youngest member. Jefferson's reputation as a gifted writer, deep thinker, and philosopher made him the natural choice to draft the Declaration. His eloquence and mastery of language were well known to his colleagues, and his writings, including his earlier works, such as The Summary View of the Rights of British America, had already established him as a compelling advocate for the American cause. Thomas Jefferson's selection as the principal author of the Declaration of Independence was not merely a matter of practicality. It was also a recognition of his profound understanding of the philosophical and political principles that underpinned the revolutionary movement. Jefferson was deeply influenced by Enlightenment thinkers, particularly John Locke, whose ideas on natural rights, the social contract, and the right to revolution informed his own political philosophy. It was Jefferson who would be tasked with translating these abstract principles into the eloquent prose of the Declaration. The committee's work commenced promptly after its formation, and Jefferson was given the responsibility of drafting the initial document. Over a period of roughly three weeks, Jefferson toiled diligently in a rented room in Philadelphia, surrounded by books and documents that would inform his work. He drew upon a wide range of sources, including his own previous writings, the ideas of Enlightenment philosophers, and the input of his fellow committee members. The resulting document, 
known as the Declaration of Independence, was a testament to Jefferson's intellectual prowess and his ability to distill complex ideas into clear and compelling language. In the Declaration, he masterfully articulated the principles of natural rights, equality, and self-determination. The famous opening words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, have become some of the most iconic and enduring words in American history. The Committee of Five, working collaboratively, and with the guidance of Jefferson's pen, presented the Declaration of Independence to the Continental Congress on June 28, 1776. After some revisions and amendments, it was formally adopted on July 4, 1776. The signing of the document by members of Congress in the ensuing weeks solidified its status as the foundational statement of American nationhood and its commitment to the ideals of freedom and self-governance. The Creative Process Thomas Jefferson's role as the principal author of the Declaration of Independence was not merely a matter of literary craftsmanship, but also a reflection of his deep and profound engagement with the political philosophies of his time. The creative process that culminated in the drafting of the Declaration was marked by Jefferson's intellectual rigor, his extensive knowledge of political philosophy, and his unswerving commitment to articulating the principles that would underpin the birth of a new nation. Central to Jefferson's intellectual arsenal were the writings of John Locke, whose ideas on government, natural rights, and the social contract had a profound influence on his political thought. Locke's Second Treatise of Government, published in 1689, provided a theoretical foundation upon which Jefferson and other American revolutionaries could build their case for independence. Locke's assertion that individuals possessed natural rights to life, liberty, and property, and that government's legitimacy rested on the consent of the governed, resonated deeply with Jefferson's own convictions. Jefferson, who had studied the classics and Enlightenment philosophy during his education, internalized Locke's ideas and seamlessly integrated them into the narrative of the Declaration. It was Locke's notion of the social contract that lay at the heart of Jefferson's understanding of government, as reflected in his famous assertion that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. The Declaration, therefore, was not a radical departure from established political thought, but rather a skillful synthesis of Enlightenment principles and the practical exigencies of colonial resistance. Beyond Locke, Jefferson's intellectual influences encompassed a broader array of Enlightenment thinkers, including the works of philosophers like Montesquieu and Rousseau. Montesquieu's concept of the separation of powers, which he outlined in The Spirit of the Laws, found its way into Jefferson's thinking about the structure of government. Likewise, Rousseau's ideas on the general will and the sovereignty of the people contributed to Jefferson's vision of self-determination and the idea that government should serve the interests of the citizenry. In addition to these philosophical influences, Jefferson was also steeped in the political debates and pamphlet literature of his time. The political turmoil leading up to the American Revolution had produced a vibrant and dynamic intellectual climate. Pamphlets, newspapers, and treatises were widely circulated, offering different perspectives on the colony's relationship with Britain and the principles of liberty. Jefferson was an avid reader of such works and actively engaged with these ideas, both as a consumer and a contributor. When it came to the actual writing of the Declaration of Independence, Jefferson approached the task with precision and care. Working alone in a rented room in Philadelphia, he meticulously drafted the document, revising and refining it over the course of several weeks. His extensive reading and philosophical grounding allowed him to craft prose that was both intellectually rigorous and accessible to a broad audience. The resulting declaration was a triumph of enlightenment thought and political philosophy. Jefferson's words articulated the principles of natural rights, equality, and self-determination with eloquence and clarity. The opening lines, which declared that all men are created equal and possess unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, 
encapsulated the revolutionary spirit of the time. These words resonated with colonists who were yearning for freedom from British oppression and who saw in Jefferson's prose a reflection of their own aspirations. Indeed, it was Jefferson's ability to capture the spirit of the revolution that made the Declaration of Independence more than just a political document. It became a unifying symbol for the American cause. The document's publication and dissemination throughout the colonies galvanized public opinion and steeled the resolve of those who sought independence. It was read aloud in town squares and printed in newspapers, inspiring colonists to take up the banner of liberty and join the fight for independence. Key Principles The Declaration of Independence, adopted on July 4, 1776, stands as one of the most celebrated and enduring documents in human history. Its significance extends far beyond its historical context, transcending the boundaries of time and geography to become a symbol of universal ideals. The Declaration, penned primarily by Thomas Jefferson, articulates a set of key principles that continue to shape the American ethos and influence the course of global political thought. At its core, the Declaration of Independence enshrines the principle of equality. Its opening words are unequivocal. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. This declaration of equality represented a revolutionary departure from the hierarchical social structures of the 18th century. It rejected the notion of innate privileges conferred by birthright and instead affirmed that every individual, regardless of their background, possessed inherent worth and dignity. Central to the Declaration's principles are the concept of unalienable rights. It proclaims that individuals are endowed with certain fundamental rights that are beyond the reach of government or external authority. Among these rights, the Declaration explicitly identifies three, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The right to life signifies not merely survival, but the ability to live free from arbitrary harm or oppression. The right to liberty encapsulates the freedom to make choices, to think and act independently, and to participate in the governance of one's own life. The pursuit of happiness encompasses the right to seek one's own well-being, to define one's own goals, and to aspire to a fulfilling life. The Declaration of Independence, through these principles, offers a profound statement on the nature of government. It posits that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. This idea, deeply rooted in the social contract theories of philosophers like John Locke, asserts that the legitimacy of government depends on the voluntary agreement of the people it governs. In essence, it underscores the idea that government exists to protect and safeguard the rights and interests of the governed rather than to perpetuate its own authority. Perhaps one of the most remarkable aspects of the Declaration is its recognition of the right of the people to alter or abolish a government that becomes destructive of the very rights it is supposed to protect. This principle reflects the notion that government should serve the interests of the people, and when it fails to do so, the people have the moral and ethical right to take action. This idea laid the groundwork for the concept of popular sovereignty and the notion that ultimate political authority resides in the hands of the citizenry. The Declaration of Independence also contains a powerful indictment of the British Crown, listing a series of grievances against King George Ioe's government. These grievances serve to illustrate how the British government had violated the principles articulated in the Declaration. The catalogue of grievances ranged from imposing taxation without consent to maintaining a standing army in the colonies to interfering with the administration of justice. The Declaration's principles were not just meant to be aspirational, but were intended to serve as a call to action. It was a rallying cry for the American colonists to unite in their pursuit of independence and self-determination. The signing of the Declaration by representatives of the 13 colonies symbolized their commitment to these principles and their readiness to defend them at any cost. In the years that followed, the principles of the Declaration of Independence continued to shape the development of American democracy and inspire movements for freedom and human rights worldwide. The United States Constitution, which followed the Declaration, sought to translate these principles into a framework of governance. 
Amendments such as the Bill of Rights further safeguarded individual liberties. Moreover, the Declaration's universal message of equality and rights has influenced the struggle for civil rights, women's rights, LGBTQ plus rights, and the quest for justice and democracy across the globe. Impact and Significance The adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776, represents a seminal moment not only in the American Revolution, but in the annals of world history. It stands as a testament to the transformative power of ideas, the courage of those who dared to defy tyranny, and the enduring significance of the principles it articulated. At its core, the Declaration of Independence was a bold and unequivocal statement of the American colonies' intent to break free from British rule. By formally declaring their independence, the colonists crossed a threshold from which there was no turning back. The document's adoption marked a critical turning point in the American Revolution, as it galvanized colonists and revolutionaries alike in their resolve to achieve liberty and self-determination. One of the most immediate and tangible impacts of the Declaration was its ability to unite disparate colonial interests. Prior to its adoption, the colonies had varying degrees of commitment to the revolutionary cause. Some were more hesitant than others to sever ties with Britain. However, the Declaration served as a unifying force, providing a moral and philosophical foundation upon which all could rally. Its principles of equality, natural rights, and the right to self-governance resonated deeply with people from diverse backgrounds and regions, bridging the gaps that had previously divided them. The Declaration of Independence also had a profound impact on the international stage, its publication and dissemination beyond the shores of North America had the effect of turning a colonial rebellion into a global struggle for liberty. As news of the Declaration spread, it captured the imagination of Enlightenment thinkers, political leaders, and common people alike across Europe and beyond. The principles espoused in the document resonated with those who were also grappling with questions of individual rights and the relationship between government and the governed. Perhaps the most significant international impact of the Declaration was its role in securing vital support for the American cause. Recognizing the moral weight of the document and the justness of the American case, countries such as France and Spain saw an opportunity to support the American colonies in their quest for independence. The alliance with France, in particular, proved crucial to the success of the American Revolution, as it brought much-needed military and financial aid. The Declaration of Independence was not merely a political document. It was also a powerful moral statement against British tyranny. It condemned King George II's actions, detailing a litany of grievances that underscored the colonists' deep-seated belief that their rights and liberties were being trampled upon. By publicly proclaiming these grievances and asserting their right to independence, the colonists placed the burden of moral responsibility squarely on the British government's shoulders. The Declaration served as a clear indictment of the British Crown's actions and aimed to rally public opinion, not only in the colonies, but also throughout the world against British oppression. The principles articulated in the Declaration of Independence have had a lasting and far-reaching impact. They continue to resonate as universal ideals that transcend time, place, and circumstance. The idea that all individuals are created equal and possess unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness has become a cornerstone of democratic governance and human rights. These principles have inspired countless movements for freedom and equality, from abolitionism and women's suffrage to the struggle for civil rights and LGBTQ rights. Moreover, the Declaration's influence extends to nations around the world that have sought independence and self-determination. Leaders and activists have drawn inspiration from the American Revolution and the principles enshrined in the Declaration when fighting against colonialism, imperialism, and authoritarian regimes. The document's emphasis on the right of the people to alter or abolish oppressive governments continues to resonate as a call to action for those who seek justice and democratic governance. Post-Declaration Career The adoption of the Declaration of Independence in 1776 
was just the beginning of Thomas Jefferson's long and influential career in American politics and government. In the wake of this historic document, Jefferson's commitment to the ideals of liberty and self-determination remained steadfast, and he continued to play a pivotal role in shaping the emerging United States. One of Jefferson's earliest post-declaration roles was as the governor of Virginia. He assumed this position in 1779, at a time when the American Revolution was in full swing. As governor, Jefferson faced numerous challenges, including the British invasion of Virginia. He worked tirelessly to mobilize the state's resources, organize its defenses, and secure support for the revolutionary cause. However, his term was also marked by difficulties and controversies, including criticism of his handling of the defense of Virginia. Jefferson's governorship was followed by a period of personal hardship. In 1781, he experienced a personal tragedy with the death of his wife, Martha Wales Skelton Jefferson. Her passing deeply affected him, and Jefferson retreated to his home at Monticello, where he mourned her loss and tended to his estate. Despite his personal trials, Jefferson's commitment to public service remained undiminished. In 1784, he was appointed as a minister to France, a position that would prove pivotal in securing vital support for the United States. During his time in Paris, Jefferson cultivated important diplomatic and intellectual connections. He also played a crucial role in negotiating trade agreements and treaties that were favorable to American interests. His experiences in France further broadened his worldview and deepened his understanding of European politics and culture. Upon his return to the United States in 1789, Jefferson found himself thrust into the tumultuous early years of the new federal government. President George Washington appointed him as the first Secretary of State, a position that placed him at the center of the nation's foreign policy and diplomatic affairs. In this role, Jefferson clashed with Alexander Hamilton, the Secretary of the Treasury, over matters of fiscal policy and the extent of federal power. This ideological divide would ultimately contribute to the emergence of the first political parties in the United States, with Jefferson becoming the leader of the Democratic-Republican Party. The 17 Ninities were marked by intense political and ideological battles. Jefferson and his Democratic-Republicans advocated for a strict interpretation of the Constitution, championing states' rights and limited federal government. They opposed many of the policies put forth by the Federalist Party, including the controversial Alien and Sedition Acts, which they saw as an affront to civil liberties. In 1800, Jefferson achieved a significant political milestone by winning the presidency of the United States in what became known as the Revolution of 1800. His election marked a peaceful transfer of power from one political party to another, a testament to the stability and endurance of American democracy. As president, Jefferson pursued an agenda that reflected his vision of a more agrarian and decentralized nation. One of the most notable achievements of Jefferson's presidency was the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. This historic acquisition doubled the size of the United States and opened up vast new territories for exploration and settlement. Jefferson commissioned the Lewis and Clark Expedition to explore the newly acquired Western lands, a journey that expanded knowledge of the American continent and strengthened the nation's claims to the Oregon Territory. Jefferson's presidency also had a significant impact on the issue of slavery. Although he personally opposed slavery, he was unable to secure its abolition during his time in office. However, he did take steps to curtail the international slave trade, signing into law the act prohibiting importation of slaves in 1808. This marked an important early step towards the eventual abolition of slavery in the United States. After leaving the presidency in 1809, Thomas Jefferson retired to his beloved Monticello, where he continued to be active in public affairs through correspondence and writings. He founded the University of Virginia, which remains a testament to his commitment to education and intellectual pursuits. In his later years, Jefferson engaged in a famous correspondence with his political rival John Adams, with whom he had reconciled. Their exchange of letters, spanning more than a decade, delved into matters of philosophy, politics, and the course of American history. 
Their deaths on the same day, July 4, 1826, exactly 50 years after the adoption of the Declaration of Independence, mark the end of an era in American history. Controversies and Contradictions The legacy of Thomas Jefferson is a complex and multifaceted one, marked by a series of contradictions that continue to intrigue and challenge historians, scholars, and the American public. Chief among these contradictions is Jefferson's stance on slavery, which stands in stark contrast to his lofty ideals of individual liberty, equality, and self-determination. Thomas Jefferson's personal and political life was deeply entwined with the institution of slavery. Despite his recognition of slavery as a moral evil and his belief in the principles of natural rights, he was a lifelong slaveholder. At the time of his death, he owned more than 600 enslaved individuals. This paradox, where a man who championed the cause of liberty held others in bondage, remains a point of contention and moral dilemma in his historical legacy. Jefferson's ambivalence and contradictions regarding slavery are evident in his writings and actions. In his draft of the Declaration of Independence, he condemned King George III for supporting the transatlantic slave trade, stating that the king had waged cruel war against human nature itself by promoting the importation of enslaved Africans. Yet he did not address the issue of slavery within the colonies in the final version of the Declaration, a glaring omission that has drawn criticism from modern observers. Moreover, Jefferson's notes on the state of Virginia written in 1781, contained passages in which he expounded on the perceived racial and intellectual inferiority of African Americans. He argued that enslaved individuals were inherently inferior in their physical and mental capacities, a view that contradicted his earlier expressions of the universal equality of mankind. These racially biased assertions continue to be a source of criticism and debate. Jefferson's role as a slaveholder extended beyond mere ownership, he was also deeply involved in the management of enslaved labor on his plantation, Monticello. His financial interests were tied to the institution of slavery, and he relied on enslaved labor for the economic viability of his estate. The labor of enslaved individuals was crucial in sustaining his agricultural pursuits and his standard of living. It is essential to acknowledge that Jefferson was not a passive participant in the institution of slavery. He was an active agent in the perpetuation of a system that denied basic human rights and subjected countless individuals to lives of bondage, hardship, and suffering. While he expressed reservations about slavery privately and at times advocated for its gradual abolition, he never took decisive action to emancipate the majority of his enslaved labor force during his lifetime. The issue of slavery loomed large in the early days of the American Republic and it would continue to be a source of tension and conflict. Jefferson's presidency saw the passage of the act prohibiting importation of slaves in 1808, a significant step in limiting the international slave trade. However, he did not pursue further legislative measures to address the institution of slavery within the existing states. His political pragmatism and the contentious nature of the issue in a young and fragile nation led him to tread cautiously. In his later years, Jefferson's views on slavery appeared to evolve, as reflected in some of his private correspondences. He expressed regret about the continued existence of slavery and voiced support for gradual emancipation. However, these views did not translate into concrete actions during his lifetime. Thomas Jefferson's contradictions and complexities regarding slavery have spurred ongoing debates and discussions among historians and scholars. Some argue that he was a product of his time, constrained by the prevailing social and economic realities of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Others contend that his failure to take more decisive action to address slavery's injustices represents a moral failing and a missed opportunity to align his actions more closely with his professed principles. Conclusion the Declaration of Independence, one of the most consequential documents in human history, embodies the timeless principles of freedom, equality, and self-determination. 
At the heart of this remarkable document lies the genius of Thomas Jefferson, a figure whose life and political evolution are inexorably intertwined with the founding of the United States. As we delve into the complexities of Jefferson's character and examine his profound influence on the American narrative, we gain a deeper understanding of both the man and the enduring legacy of the Declaration. Thomas Jefferson's early life and education set the stage for his remarkable journey. Born on April 13, 1743, into a prominent Virginia family, he inherited a legacy of privilege and a commitment to public service. Raised in the verdant landscapes of Shadwell, Virginia, he imbibed the spirit of independence and intellectual curiosity from his father, Peter Jefferson, and his mother, Jane Randolph Jefferson. His comprehensive education, which included the study of Latin, Greek, and classical literature, exposed him to the profound ideas that would shape his political philosophy in later years. Jefferson's entry into politics occurred when he was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses in 1769. As tensions between the American colonies and Great Britain escalated, he emerged as a vocal advocate for colonial rights, playing a pivotal role in the passage of the Virginia Resolves in 1765. These resolutions boldly asserted that Virginians possessed the same rights as their English counterparts and should not be subjected to taxation without representation. However, it was with the outbreak of the American Revolutionary War in 1775 that Jefferson's involvement in the revolutionary movement gained momentum. He attended the Second Continental Congress as a representative from Virginia, where his eloquent writings, including the summary view of the rights of British America, 1774, drew attention to the colonists' grievances against British oppression. These writings showcased his deep understanding of political philosophy and his ability to articulate complex ideas in clear and compelling language. The apex of Jefferson's contributions to the American cause came with his pivotal role in the Committee of Five, formed in June 1776 by the Continental Congress to draft a formal Declaration of Independence. Among its members, including luminaries such as John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston, Jefferson's reputation as a gifted writer and philosopher made him the natural choice to draft the document. His ability to synthesize Enlightenment principles particularly those of John Locke, into the eloquent prose of the Declaration set the stage for a revolutionary transformation. The Declaration of Independence, crafted by Jefferson's pen, remains a timeless testament to his intellectual prowess and his commitment to the ideals of liberty and equality. The document's opening words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, have become iconic, encapsulating the essence of the American Revolution and serving as a beacon of hope for generations. However, Jefferson's life and legacy are not without their complexities and contradictions. While he championed the cause of individual liberty and self-governance, he was also a lifelong slaveholder. His inability to address the issue of slavery more forcefully during his lifetime remains a point of contention and moral scrutiny among historians and scholars. The tension between his professed ideals and his actions underscores the broader struggle in American history to reconcile lofty principles with the social and political realities of the time. In the years following the Declaration's adoption, Jefferson continued to contribute significantly to the American cause. He served as the governor of Virginia, minister to France, secretary of state, and eventually as the third president of the United States. His presidency was marked by significant events such as the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition, and the act prohibiting importation of slaves. These achievements, along with his founding role in the University of Virginia, demonstrated his enduring commitment to the nation's growth and progress. More information and facts, the Committee of Five. The drafting of the Declaration of Independence, an enduring symbol of American liberty and self-determination, was not the sole work of Thomas Jefferson, 
While Jefferson's authorship is widely celebrated, the creation of this historic document was a collaborative effort, and its final form bore the imprint of not just one mind but several. Jefferson's role as the primary author, however, remained central to the story. In June 1776, the Second Continental Congress established a committee tasked with the weighty responsibility of drafting a formal declaration of independence from Great Britain. This committee, known as the Committee of Five, was composed of John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston, and of course, Thomas Jefferson. Each member brought unique qualifications, perspectives, and talents to the table, making it a formidable assembly of American intellects. While Thomas Jefferson was chosen to draft the initial document, the contributions of the other committee members should not be overlooked. John Adams, a fervent advocate for independence and a prolific writer, had been one of the earliest and most vocal proponents of declaring independence. His passion and conviction were instrumental in gaining support for the revolutionary cause. Benjamin Franklin, already a respected figure on both sides of the Atlantic, brought his diplomatic acumen and sage counsel to the committee. His presence lent gravitas to the proceedings and bolstered the document's credibility in the eyes of the international community, which would become increasingly important as the American colonies sought foreign support. Roger Sherman, a delegate from Connecticut, was a legal scholar and an experienced legislator. His pragmatic approach to governance and his understanding of the legal intricacies involved in declaring independence made him a valuable asset. Sherman's contributions ensured that the document was not just a philosophical treatise, but a practical instrument of political change. Robert Livingston, the least known of the Committee of Five, was a delegate from New York. Although he was recalled by his state before he could sign the final document, his insights and perspectives during the drafting process were nonetheless significant. The drafting process of the Declaration of Independence was not a straightforward affair. Thomas Jefferson was given the primary task of composing the document, and he retreated to a rented second-floor apartment on Market Street in Philadelphia to undertake this momentous assignment. Drawing upon his extensive knowledge of political philosophy, particularly the works of John Locke and Enlightenment thinkers, Jefferson crafted an eloquent and persuasive argument for independence. However, Jefferson's draft was not a solitary endeavor. He had ample resources at his disposal, including his own previous writings, such as the summary view of the rights of British America, which he had penned in 1774. Moreover, he drew inspiration from the resolutions passed by various colonial assemblies and from the words and ideas of his fellow committee members. The draft that emerged from Jefferson's pen was then subjected to the scrutiny and editing of the other members of the Committee of Five. John Adams, in particular, made several revisions and suggestions. One of his most noteworthy contributions was advocating for the replacement of Jefferson's original phrase, we hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable, with the now famous, we hold these truths to be self-evident. This change not only strengthened the document's philosophical underpinnings, but also made it more accessible and persuasive. After a period of collaborative effort and refinement, the Committee of Five presented the final draft of the Declaration of Independence to the Continental Congress. This momentous event took place on June 28, 1776, when the document was read aloud before the assembled delegates. The Congress engaged in several days of debate with further revisions and alterations before officially adopting the Declaration on July 4, 1776. While Thomas Jefferson's name is forever linked with the Declaration of Independence, the vital contributions of his fellow committee members cannot be overstated. John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston all played pivotal roles in shaping the document that would declare the American colonies' intent to break free from British rule. Their collective efforts, characterized by spirited debate, thoughtful revisions, and a shared commitment to liberty, transformed Jefferson's initial draft into a powerful statement of revolutionary ideals. Jefferson's Copy of the Koran Thomas Jefferson's commitment to religious freedom was a cornerstone of his beliefs 
and a central tenet of his vision for the United States. In his pursuit of a society that respected the rights of individuals to worship as they saw fit, Jefferson made a notable and unconventional gesture. He owned a copy of the Quran, the holy book of Islam. This action, reflecting his open-mindedness and commitment to religious tolerance, provides a fascinating glimpse into his views on matters of faith and governance. Thomas Jefferson's advocacy for religious freedom can be traced back to his early political career in Virginia. In 1777, he authored the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, a groundbreaking piece of legislation that would later become one of his proudest accomplishments. This statute aimed to disestablish the Anglican Church as the official state religion and protect the rights of religious dissenters, including Baptists, Methodists, and others, who faced discrimination and persecution. Jefferson's belief in the separation of church and state was a fundamental element of his thinking. He argued that individuals should be free to exercise their religion or hold no religious beliefs at all without interference from the government. His dedication to this principle was not limited to Christianity. He extended it to all faiths. The possession of a Quran, Islam's holy scripture, was a tangible expression of Jefferson's commitment to religious pluralism. The exact circumstances surrounding his acquisition of the Quran are not entirely clear, but it is believed to have occurred during the early 1760s, long before he became a prominent statesman. His interest in the Quran may have been piqued by his legal studies, as Islamic law was among the subjects he examined. Additionally, Jefferson had a deep curiosity about the world's religions and an appreciation for diverse cultural perspectives. Jefferson's Quran was the translation by George Sale, an Englishman who produced an influential English version of the Quran in the 18th century. This translation was one of the first widely available in the English-speaking world and played a role in shaping Western perceptions of Islam. The possession of the Quran was not an isolated act, but part of a broader philosophy. Jefferson's belief in religious freedom extended to Muslims as well. In 1786, during his time as the United States Minister to France, he was involved in negotiations with the Barbary States, North African nations. At the time, American merchant ships faced piracy and extortion by privateers from these states. In his diplomatic correspondence, Jefferson advocated for religious tolerance and stressed that the United States had no religious quarrel with the Muslim powers. This principled stance on religious freedom reflected his deep-seated belief in the importance of respecting the religious practices and beliefs of others. Jefferson's ownership of the Quran has been cited as a symbol of his intellectual curiosity and his commitment to the principle of religious liberty. It also underscores his recognition that the United States was a diverse nation, with citizens from various religious backgrounds. In his vision, the government had no business promoting one religion over another, and all individuals, regardless of their faith, should be afforded the same rights and protections. The ongoing ownership debate, the historical legacy of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's iconic plantation home in Virginia, has been marked by a complex and contentious issue that has challenged traditional narratives about one of America's most revered founding fathers. For many years, Monticello was a site of historical controversy and speculation due to the persistent belief that Thomas Jefferson had fathered children with Sally Hemings, one of his enslaved women. The resolution of this long-standing debate through DNA evidence in the late 20th century has had profound implications not only for our understanding of Jefferson's personal life, but also for broader questions about how we remember and commemorate historical figures. Monticello, nestled in the picturesque Virginia countryside, was not only the physical embodiment of Jefferson's architectural and horticultural genius, but also a place where the complexities of his personal life intersected with his public persona. The story of Sally Hemings, an enslaved woman who lived and worked at Monticello, had been passed down through oral tradition and historical accounts for generations. She was the half-sister of Jefferson's wife, Martha Wales Skelton Jefferson, and her connection to the Jefferson family was significant. 
The controversy surrounding Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson primarily revolved around the assertion that they had a long-term, intimate relationship and that Jefferson had fathered several of her children. This claim was a source of contention and debate among historians, with some supporting the idea and others skeptical due to the absence of concrete evidence. The turning point in the ongoing ownership debate came with advancements in DNA analysis in the late 20th century. In 1998, a comprehensive genetic study conducted by Dr. Eugene Foster and a team of geneticists provided strong support for the claim that Thomas Jefferson had fathered at least one child, Eston Hemings, with Sally Hemings. This groundbreaking research was based on the analysis of DNA from male line descendants of the Jefferson and Hemings families, which revealed a genetic link between them. The DNA evidence was a watersh moment in the understanding of Jefferson's personal life and legacy. It lent significant credibility to the claims made by Sally Hemings' descendants and added a new layer of complexity to the story of Monticello. While some had long suspected the relationship between Jefferson and Hemings, the scientific confirmation brought this aspect of history to the forefront and prompted a revaluation of Jefferson's character and actions. The acknowledgement of Jefferson's relationship with Sally Hemings and the recognition of their descendants as part of the broader Jefferson family challenged prevailing narratives about the Founding Father. It raised profound questions about how to reckon with the complexities of history, particularly when it comes to revered figures. Jefferson's intellectual contributions to American democracy and his role as the principal author of the Declaration of Independence had long been celebrated, but the revelation about his personal life, including his relationship with an enslaved woman, challenged the idealized image of the Founding Fathers. The ongoing ownership debate also had implications for the preservation and interpretation of historic sites like Monticello. In the wake of the DNA evidence, Monticello's curators and historians began to incorporate the story of Sally Hemings and her descendants into the site's interpretation, ensuring a more comprehensive and inclusive understanding of the people who lived and worked there. This shift represented a broader trend in historical scholarship toward acknowledging the contributions and experiences of enslaved individuals and marginalized groups in American history. All men are created equal and slavery. The Declaration of Independence, penned by Thomas Jefferson in 1776, stands as one of the most revered and eloquent documents in the history of democratic governance. Its opening words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, have been celebrated as a timeless assertion of the principles of liberty and equality. However, the stark contrast between these lofty ideals and Jefferson's own status as a slaveholder has given rise to complex debates, criticism, and questions regarding the sincerity of this foundational statement and the inconsistencies in his views on equality. The phrase, all men are created equal, is perhaps the most iconic and enduring line from the Declaration of Independence. Its inclusion was not arbitrary. It was a deliberate expression of the revolutionary principles that underpinned the American quest for independence. Jefferson, drawing upon the Enlightenment philosophy of thinkers like John Locke and the broader spirit of the age, articulated a vision of natural rights that transcended distinctions of birth, class, and privilege. In asserting that all men possessed inherent and equal rights, he laid the philosophical groundwork for a nation founded on democratic ideals. Jefferson's inclusion of this assertion in the Declaration signaled a profound departure from the monarchical systems of Europe, where inherited privileges and hierarchical social structures prevailed. It proclaimed that the legitimacy of government derived from the consent of the governed, rather than from divine right or aristocratic birthright. This assertion resonated deeply with the aspirations of the American colonies and their desire for self-determination. However, the glaring inconsistency in Jefferson's own life and actions was his status as a slaveholder. At the time he penned these words, he owned enslaved individuals at his Monticello plantation in Virginia. This contradiction between his philosophical pronouncements and his personal behavior has led to criticism and debate among scholars and the broader public.
Jefferson's defense of slavery within the Declaration of Independence is conspicuous by its absence. While he condemned King George I.I. for promoting the transatlantic slave trade in his original draft, this section was ultimately omitted from the final version, likely due to political considerations and the delicate nature of the issue. Jefferson's decision not to address the institution of slavery directly in the Declaration has been viewed by some as a glaring omission and a missed opportunity to align his rhetoric more closely with his actions. In his private writings, Jefferson expressed conflicting views on the issue of slavery. In his 1781 work, Notes on the State of Virginia, he made racially biased assertions about the intellectual and physical capacities of African Americans, suggesting that they were inherently inferior. These views contradicted his earlier proclamation of the equality of all men. However, in later years, there are indications that his views evolved, and he expressed regrets about the persistence of slavery. He even voiced support for gradual emancipation in some of his correspondences. Despite these evolving views, Jefferson's actions regarding slavery remained inconsistent. He never took decisive action to free the majority of his enslaved individuals during his lifetime. While he did free a few enslaved individuals, including members of the Hemings family, his overall approach was characterized by gradualism and inaction. The paradox of Jefferson's stance on slavery, coupled with his celebrated words on equality, continues to generate debate and controversy. Some argue that he was a product of his time, constrained by the social and economic realities of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Others view his failure to take more decisive action against slavery as a moral failing and a missed opportunity to align his actions more closely with his professed principles.